welcome back. It's Biggs. Today, I have something super special for you. Dear friend of mine, Mr. Kevin Acton here. I'm back in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. It's been years since I've seen my dear friend. You guys got to check out this guy's incredible fish room. It's insane. Good to see you, Biggsy. Welcome, welcome to the basement. So. <laughs> Let's take a peek. All right, my friend. Now I've seen this fish room many, many times and it's it's always a wonder. And every time I've been here, granted, I've been here in about three years, yeah. but uh, it has changed, it always changes. Your interests have changed and evolved, but you've always had an incredible green thumb. Let's see what you got. Yeah, it's, uh, thanks Biggsy, and good good to see you again. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, we'll start right here, uh, kind of the entrance tank, a uh, little 45 gallon, uh, just right here on the corner. Uh, got some super red uh, plecos in there, nice herd of rummy nose, uh, there's some emperor tetras, uh, and lots of couple different kinds of quarries. The whites and I are spawning right in the tank. Uh, there's some babes in there, and then there's some Venezuelans. Venezuelensis, is that how you say it? Sure. Uh, something like that. And anyway, yeah, just a nice little 45, uh, some cool bell, a couple sword plants, nothing too fancy, big Anubius in the back, and uh, yeah. Is there any uh, real specific special plants in this particular no, tank? Not, not really, kind of run of the mill stuff, and I, I like a tank that you, different things can come and go. So fish can go to the back, they can get lost in the plants, they can come back, you don't see them for a while, that's okay. And if I think they died and they don't come back for a couple of weeks, then you know we always look afterwards. So, uh, But yeah, all in all, nothing too fancy in this one. Uh, this is my quarantine tank, Chris. Uh, just a kind of place for things to get landed when they arrive. So I, I got some cardinals about a month ago. So they're just finishing up in here right now. They've been having live brine shrimp and baby brine and there's some different catfish in here that usually live in here one is the uh, the marbled cat you can see it the whip tail right down at the front here beautiful little fish those are just like the most gorgeous fish love them uh, i mean they got great coloration and then they have that tail and it's just like blows your mind when they turn sideways right they got that whip on the tail uh, there's also some l10a's uh, the red lizards in here they're hiding under the log right now but there's a couple of male and female little tube in the corner for them to spawn in if they feel like it. And this is just your, as this you said, quarantine. quarantine yeah, tank. this yeah. is quarantine. Just yeah. is just, you know, a place for <laughs> things just to get started before they go into the other tanks, right? So you got it. And then cool plant. We're going to see it later in another aquarium, but this is the uh, lymphophilia, the aromatica, which is like a really big world plant. And I cut this one out of the other tank the other day. So it's just parked here for now. Might have to go home with somebody to Winnipeg or something, you know. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll figure that out. Uh, Corey spawning tanks. Uh, we got the C-125s, the red Aspidorus, and you can see the babes cruising around. The babes aren't as red yet, but the parents are uh, pretty red. There's a couple males here uh, up in the front corner. Females are about twice the size of the males. Uh, nice little Aspidorus. Really now they're cool related fish. to a Cory, but they're yeah. they stay smaller and their facial features are different? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, there's a couple little things that are different on them. Uh, I'm not a super, super expert on that, but you can see one of the girls here coming forward she's like quite a bit bigger than the yeah. male um, but they're beautiful little fish easy to spawn really they and they're okay with their kids right in the tank but they don't scatter their eggs in the mop and they'll and their kids will grow up they won't eat their own kids which is nice so uh, pandas always a good are, thing when you don't yeah. eat the kids yeah that's true pandas are right next door uh, and they spawned yeah. last night the mop is here he's just the classic pandas that have been around yeah, for a long classic, time classic Don yeah, Hamilton yeah. corridors panda from old club <laughs> member from South Saskatoon, and you can see the girls obviously bigger than the guys. But I remember him breeding those fish in like yeah, the, the mid 80s. Literally, yeah, <laughs> and like 40 years ago when I got in the hobby, and they went for $25 a bag. These are a scleromastic species, which is the same as a Barbatus species. Of uh, They're not a quarry, but these are the Prionatus. Beautiful fish. They got that really, real long nose. Really super streamlined. They're not full grown yet. I don't think they, I think they'll get a little bit bigger. They haven't spawned yet, but they're kind of acting like they want to. So these tanks are set up specifically for quarries. They all got matten filters. They got the heavy flow on the top. Um, a couple little things that I learned from my friend Dana Allen. Um, you know, you, having mops in the tanks, tying a piece of uh, of, of uh, your wool to the to the filter. One piece of wool, just one. And you tie it right on the surface and you let it just float along the surface. A lot of the quarries, for whatever reason, 
want to swim right up and they want to put that their egg right on that single piece of yarn right in the that's current right in the current they will come up and they'll put their egg right onto that yarn now would there be any advantage to putting several streams strands I, or? I don't know I've only ever tried the one and I've had eggs on it and it's super easy to collect them because they're all nicely in a row yeah. on that <laughs> one piece of yarn so you literally take it off put it into your hatching container and and you're good to go this is uh, this is kind of my four show tanks um, I mean the other ones are okay but these are my four primary show tanks they're all on automatic water changers. They got daily water change. Uh, they're right now they're set at five percent. Uh, city water is a little harsh right now in the winter, so I'll knock them up to ten percent in the summer. This is a uh, discus tank, wild caught reds, Rio Cure. Uh, got it from Spencer Jack in Winnipeg last summer, and they're beautiful fish. One is obviously being somewhat picked on in the back corner. I got a pair in there. There's also some L397s in there, and it's just heavily planted tank, higher temperature, not a lot of competition for them, and they're obviously cleaning up some blood rooms that they got earlier today. So moving over to the 135, uh, right here we got some cool plants. Chris, a uh, bunch of Anubias that's been in there. That's Anubias Nana, and there's kind of like a field of it there, and there's a field over there. Uh, some really cool cryptic careens, a Eusteriana, which is a giant crypt, um, given the right conditions. It'll grow like the size of the leaves coming out of the aquarium. That's like basically almost three feet long. So, and it just drapes across the top. Really like it. Uh, some sword plants. This is a really weird crypt. And then the Echinodorus hormani. This is the black Echinodorus. You don't see it very often in the hobby. Um, I was fortunate to get one a number of years ago from a fellow in Edmonton. You've had that plant now for about what, two time. decades? Yeah, about 20 <laughs> years. Yeah, and kept it alive. It does varying things depending on the conditions. I had it in this nano tank. Uh, for a while, my nano tank is a 30 gallon, and uh, and it actually was flourishing in there. And then when I redid the nano tank, I thought I'll move it over here and try it here. Not the same results. You can see the outside leaves are actually larger than the center leaves coming up because that's what the transition that happened when it came from the nano tank a couple months ago. Some of the outside ones that were really good are dying off. The center's still strong, so yeah, it'll come back. I, Just I, a little bit of shock. Yeah, it's one of those. And, and what's this? You, we didn't know the name on this one but this crypt here that you were showing me earlier it's this is beautiful. incredible it's a beautiful plant it's yeah. so waxy i can't remember the name of it but it yeah it's super dark red super dark green and i bought it in vancouver aquariums west i think you did yep. a presentation there a yep. couple months ago that's a great you, store a beautiful, fantastic store every time i go there that's my last stop before i fly out so you can get stuff yeah. <laughs> yeah, just load my suitcase up and away we go this is my nano tank uh, it's got some rainbows in it and there's some Corydoras gryphus hidden here. Some really cool little plants. There's some shrimp. Heard of autosynclus, which I like a lot. And uh, yeah. This plant that's right in the front center. This is not a common plant that a lot of people have a lot of success yeah, with. Yeah, that's the Pugosteam and uh, And I, I've probably spent $1,000 on that plant over the years. Killed $998 worth. <laughs> and, and then I changed the substrate in this tank, put in the JBL sand, and then put in the Tropica uh, sub, uh, soil? Yeah. the soil underneath it. And this plant with, with light and CO2 absolutely flourished. And it's spreading, it's carpeting, doing great. Really happy with that one. Um, so there's some other cool plants too. The, this is a pink flamingo crypt. Uh, really interesting color and kind of texture in the leaves. Uh, that's the lymphophilia, the aromatica with the big whorls in the back. Oh, it's just huge. That's yeah. the one you were looking at in that I, yeah, in the in quarantine the tank. tank. The one that I cut out of here, it was in the middle there. Uh, there's an echinodorus barthi. This is a type of pogostema. They call it an octopus. It's a stellata, but they call it an octopus variety, and it's got super weird leaves that kind of just go strange. So, um, Now, what are the lights? I noticed these lights that you're using on this yeah. one is also the same type of light that you're using on your, yeah, your main plant tank. I've got five of them. They're aquatic illumination. They're the Freshwater Prime 16. Uh, they're programmable on my phone. You can set the parameters, hours, time. Um, they, they're pretty pretty good light. I, and I've had good success with them on this tank to start, put them on the 45, and then I got three for this tank. They're out of the U.S. They're made in the U.S., so... Yeah, they give a beautiful, that LED gives that yeah. beautiful shimmer. You get that, yeah, you get that trickle and then the filter trickle through the, you know, through the plants. I, I, that for me is all part of it. So I'm a plant guy. Uh, always have been a plant guy. 
I've always been a plant guy, but this tank here, um, because I really fell in love with these uh, Kerber Hero Restratus, the real burrows, uh, and managed to get a set of them, they're a sifter. And so they literally moved this tank from the middle to the edge, back to the other edge, and that's what they do. And, that, and I mean, they're beautiful fish, they're gorgeous. They haven't spawned yet. When they spawn, then I will retire them and send them on to someone else, and it'll go back to being a fully planted aquarium. Well, you say that, but I've been here many times, and there's been uh, I, labor been, dens were in here, and I, the barbs I were in here. Dens, I spawned the red devils <laughs> in here, and so, I mean, yeah, the tank goes through, it goes through cichlids, and cichlids have a way to take a planted tank and, and kind of just adjust it however they really feel yeah. like adjusting you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> so that's just the way they are so but the rainbows are gorgeous uh, there's some parvum latitudium parvum the bosmanis those are wild caught uh, denison the uh, got them a number of years ago from Spencer the coloration of them is fantastic in the wild caught and they're yeah, that's I mean, a fish that uh, it's almost impossible to get wild now because it's yeah I believe it's uh, listed on CITES now yeah you might be right the other cool fish in here I don't know if it's out right now there's an L14 Pleco which is stunning with the yellow polka dots, but there are Corridors Longipinus in here that we brought back from Uruguay when we collected there in 2011 with Felipe. And some of the fry from the ones that we brought back are in this aquarium. And they, they look like a giant Palliatus, except they got a really high dorsal fin on them. Yeah, there's one coming up amongst the bow on the left side, coming up towards yeah, the center. Yeah, that's, yeah, there's one right across there. the front there. Yeah, that's one there. And they're, like I say, they're stunning fish. And the male, the dorsal on the males is fantastic. I remember when you guys brought them back. It was wild. Yeah, you so. got two females up front. <laughs> yeah, so. No, so the yeah, fish, your fish have always looked absolutely top notch, Kevin. You've been involved. There's lots of awards on the walls and stuff. This is a true fish room, in my opinion. Yeah, old school a, fish keeping. It's old, it's old school. But, you know, I, I started over 40 years ago and been keeping fish for, you know, a good part of my life and love the hobby. It's a great hobby. Uh, great, you know, there's something about coming down and being able to put your hands in the water, being with plants, being with the fish, spawning fish, raising them. And the friends, like, I yep. mean, you know, I've been friends for, what, 30, 40 years now. Yep. Dana and I, you know, like, Dwayne all the guys in Saskatoon we got a great club and then you meet you go out and you meet other guys and there's everywhere you go it's the same right there's yeah. always people everywhere that are really really interesting people and for me that's a big part of it I totally enjoy that side of it the social side and my fish room is a great place to drink a beer yeah. and if you're in town look me up all right this is the water change system this is where all the magic happens right yeah this in the co2 system there's a oh, yeah. co2 cylinder down here electronic solenoid uh, co2 goes on half Half an hour about four in the afternoon half hour before the lights do goes out at night about a half hour before it's all an electronic timer there's a five plex needle valve there so I'm feeding five tanks with co2 in the fish room obviously helps with the you know with the uh, with the plant growth and the lighting and then the water change system city water coming in uh, electronic solenoid filtration is just a standard uh, carbon lead uh, chloramine chlorine filter do you have chloramine or chlorine here we have both Okay. in our water. So you get the chlorine chloramine filter, replace it about once every three to four months and it, it then is fed when, when the water runs through it, it's on a timer as well and it comes on every night at 11 o'clock. Right now it's set for 15 minutes. Sometimes I'll turn it up to a half an hour. Each tank is metered using a, under, a sprinkler control valve. So okay. the 30 gallon tank gets a 10% water change, it gets 3 gallons. So it's metered right here. Okay. The 150 gallon gets 15 gallons. And so you can control each tank so individually. You can, you can set each tank for whatever you want, and then the water change is consistent every night. The chlorine is basically removed by this, but you're also only changing 10% of the water. Right. And so that makes a big difference in that you don't have to add chemicals. Uh, the fish love it. The fish grow, the, you know, the plant growth is fantastic. I think a big reason that my tanks look the way they do and they look super clean and they're, you know, is just a combination of the, the water changer, the CO2, the lighting, and the filtration. When you, when you have the right blend, it's not that much work. <music>